Je ne peux pas When I hear the phrase I think of when you are out cheering and you're trying to catch one of those last weathers and he flies through the air, headbutts you in the eye, uh, leaves you with a nice bruiser, and then you continue shearing. You get it done. You figure out a way to, to make it work despite everything that may be mounting against you. Uh, that's what I think about. And then you plan the next butchering. <laughs> Man, it, you know, there's a, there's a song from uh, Bruce Springsteen, and it's our anthem song. Because when we're really when we're down and out, um, I put that song on, and it, it you know it says there's going to be hard times coming, there's going to be good times coming, but there's also going to be hard times coming. Um, swing that ball at me because I'm going to I'm going to grab it and I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work as hard as I can to do what needs to be done. You know, it, it, it's, it's just being honest and upfront and working your butt off, you know, bring that wrecking ball on is, is, is all I can say. And that's, that's what I, the word, you know, is, is that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, today's cool. segment of How Was It Bit? We're so glad that we're able to have Bahi Whitethorn on today with us. Um, and we're extremely excited to announce our collaboration with our uh, with Kayla Jackson, who is running the Art Place Grant. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, Bahi, for joining us. I remember meeting Bahi a couple years back. My husband had just gotten into the Museum of Northern Arizona um, show, the Navajo show, and we were checking in stuff and you know getting ready for getting the jurd stuff all together. And this real nice guy came up to us and he really was asking us about pieces and we really started talking about him and, and then he left and, and we looked at the people who were collecting my husband's Jared work and we were like, that was a really nice guy. And, and they're like, oh, you don't know who that is? And we we're like, no, we don't know who that is. And they're like, that's Bahi Whitethorn. And we were like, oh no, we didn't even say or introduce ourselves. Um, but Bahi, I wanted to let you know that um, my family and I are we're such huge fans and we have just been tracking how you have been absolutely su supportive of up and coming Navajo artists. And it's one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on today um, as part of our conversation series. So Bahi, without further ado, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Bahi Whitethorn and I come about from uh, Chanteau, Arizona, which is, uh, if you look uh, west from where you are, from the school, I'm behind Black Mesa, way on the other side. But I'm a look at an angel. Hello, Hashkato, I was just cheating. Hello, is it land that you cheat? Do 
I live in Flagstaff and I have been uh, an artist or have, you know, uh, my career spans about 50 years or so. Uh, I really didn't uh, start my career until I was 36 years old. I realized that I needed to do something with my uh, talent and gift. I was told by many, many, many uh, mentors, you know, that I did have a talent and I did have an eye for to pursue if I wished to become was a, quite a uh, journey for me to realize that that's what I need to be doing. So I took time, made time to pursue that career. And it's been good, you know, it's been a good decision, you know. No regrets, yeah, it's been fun and it's been great, you know. It's taken me uh, halfway around the world. I'm sure. And, uh, it, it, yeah. I guess one of the first things that we have um, that we're kind of curious about is, you know, when was the first time that you realized that you had this knack for, for, for painting? Well, um, I've always been, uh, I was little, when I was little, five years old, I think I realized that I wanted to draw like my grandfather and, and uh, he would uh, draw horses and I, I sort of uh, took an interest. And I was a little pest, he says, you know, when I was a kid to get him to uh, take time to uh, give me a chance uh, uh, to, to give a little less lesson by him, you know, how to draw a horse, you know. So once I learned how, I, I just never stopped, you know. It, you know, five years old, being a kid and seeing what can be done with a pencil, you know. I, I've been, uh, I looked at what my brothers and my uncles did, you know, I just went along and, and just built my, uh, interest, you know, develop my uh, gift, you know, talent. And my grandfather says, all it takes is a little bit of time to develop your, your interests and your talent, you know. So that's what I did is, you know, having fun, you know, enjoying what I was doing. And uh, it just took me uh, many places. Yeah. Where's your favorite place that it's taken you so far? I think, uh, let's see, my favorite place to realize and to really appreciate my culture. I think I, I've gone to, into the mountains of France, you know, in France. I realized that people live just like we do out here on the res, off the grid. They make everything, they plant everything, they eat everything that is uh, freshly grown, you know. And I ate so much and I never uh, found myself stuffy, you know, bloated. And I realized that I need to uh, take care of and see, actually experience. I guess it gave me, it gave me the eye to realize that there's a lot of that back home too, you know, that I could enjoy my fresh fruits if I wanted to plant it, you know. And that's how we grew up is, I mean, uh, coming off the res, that's the joy of the whole thing, just the experience of being Navajo. To, to come from uh, lands that is, uh, is fruitful, if, if you just take the time to do something with it. Yeah. And I guess you can kind of say that with your, your, your work too. Um, there's definitely a lot of uh, symbolism and metaphor between, between those two. What has been, um, what would you say has been some of the most challenging parts uh, to being able to become a self-sustaining artist? Well, I think, um, 
to begin with, uh, the biggest challenge I had was how to get exposure, how to uh, 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 build a market for my work, you know, on and off the reservation. Uh, off the reservation, there's many, many, many opportunities. So to, to, to step off and pursue a career in art, you have to develop a market place for yourself so you can exist on your own and be. I realized that you're an artist or uh, always looking for representation or, or being uh, close to, to work with or something like and they make somebody. I realize uh, the understanding of an, uh, an artist starving, you know. I realized and learned that I didn't need to be dependent on anybody because uh, if your artwork is just on the shelf somewhere or in a gallery, not doing anything, then, then you, you starve, you wait, can't wait, you know. If you want an income or something to pay your bills, you kind of have to get out. You have to go beyond uh, uh, um, uh, the borders of the reservation, I guess. You know, you have to look for, you know, we have mountains all around us and you have to cross those mountains, you know, to get on the other side. There's more to it, you know, than just, just the reservation. So the world is pretty big. So that's what I went and, uh, to visual. I visualize where I could do and what I could do, where I could do it, you know, and I learn how to do it, you know. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit of work. Uh, I've been done, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to get up early. You have to be there first. You have to be the one that shows or, or opens the gate, you know, to lead the way. And what uh, that is that uh, if you work, you know, if you make the time to work, it gets you, uh, it gets you somewhere, you know, just like going to school, studying, paying attention to your teachers, listening, learning to listen, you know, learning to share what you do comes back and uh, 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 the returns are very fruitful. You know. We have a lot of people that we talk with who define success in, in different ways. Um, some people look at it in terms of like a personal success. Other people look at it in, in terms of, you know, cultural success or economic success. Was there a moment that you can think about um, and reflect upon in which you were like, yeah, this is, that's when I realized, you know, I, I had made it that I, I could do this? Well, um, just looking at uh, clientele, people that you work with, you, you, it takes a lot of people to make you, you know, I, real, I learned that it's not just uh, how, how, how high of a price you have on a, a piece of artwork. It takes people. Uh, the more you connect with people, the more you communicate with people, the more you visit with people, they, they, they help you. They, um, um, my phone's ringing. Um, well, like I was saying, people make you. It's not how pretty, how, how, how pretty a horse you paint. It's how you communicate with people, how you get along with people. So you learn to communicate, you learn to share you know, what you do because you're constantly being asked about what you do, or where you're from, or why you do things, you know. You, you, you know, I realized that um, uh, my, I, when, when I started, I visualized, I set a goal of what I wanted to do, you know, make a career. And, and that was what, and then how was I gonna do it? I was gonna make time to 
to do something with my interests, develop my talent. And uh, when, I, when am I going to do it? I'm going to do it now because I'm making time for the next few years to, to develop this uh, idea of a career. So once I realized that I can do it, and my family was willing to give me some time out of a 24-hour pie of clock, you know, and they gave me time, six hours to every day to do something with my interests, which was six in the morning to 12 noon. And uh, I learned to use it because the kids were small and they went off to school at six early in the morning and they were gone for six hours. And they would come home at noon and then I had to put things down. I had to walk away from what I was doing and learn to use 24 hours. Taking 24 hours, I really learned that I have eight hours to sleep, to rest. I have eight hours to work. I have eight, eight hours to be with the family. And then once I realized what I could do, how I could budget my time to pursue my career, they gave me that six hours. And they were happy to give it to me because it was my time and they learned to see it that way. They, they let me have. So to this day, they leave me alone. They, they leave, leave me alone to my work in the morning, you know even though they're all grown and now I got grandkids, you know. They, so time is very important, you know, to, as, as, a, as a Navajo being, you know, you get uh, a life and, and it's short, you know, it comes quick. Like I started 50 years ago and now I'm 70 years old and, and uh, you know, I've done a lot, you know, I've done, but I actually built my career in 11 years. I made the time, I put the time in, and really got out there to, to push and promote my work. And, and uh, there's a lot to the package than just painting pictures and making money. Success is, I think when you come from the res, you establish a home, you know, you. You work to, 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 to get a home because he, we know on the res we, he, there's none, you know. So I had to work hard to take all my money that I made to invest and, and learn to invest it in real estate. And I bought 10 acres when I started. And over the years, I have learned how to uh, sell and how to build my house, how to look at for the financial side of being an artist, and then now become a, a small business person, you know. So it gives you a lot, you know. Not only do you, does it teach you to uh, develop your talents and your gifts, it teaches you about business, it teaches you about people, it teaches you about uh, your own people, your community, you know, how do you give back to your community you come from. And you learn a lot, you know. Uh, to be independent, uh, you sort of control everything, how much you make, how much you, if you wish to make, how much you wish not to make, so the taxes are not too, too much, you know. <laughs> so, so you learn a lot of things, you know. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Or, yeah. or no, I think it's yes. <laughs> you, you is, speak a lot to yeah. um, a lot of the questions that our students have, um, which is how do I make time, right? How do I prioritize? Um, how do I invest in myself? And so uh, definitely, I think that that's something that that's important to 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 keep stressing to to our students is that you have to invest that time in yourself and, and see that value in yourself in the long run. How how do you see your um, how do you see our culture reflected in right. your work? In my work. Yep. Mm -hmm. How do I well when you um, let's see when you, I'm Navajo you know hundred uh, percent. 
I'm, uh, uh, I know what is Navajo, I know the language, I know the culture, I know the traditions, I know what Navajo, the essence of Navajo is. What is the smell, the taste, the color, you know? Because I come from there and I use that in my, in my work. Everything, anything that has to do with Navajo culture, I do. I don't go too far off as far as, as uh, you know, trying to be uh, a part of the mainstream, mainstream art, what's happening there. I try to maintain what I like because, you know, educating our own people is, is uh, and the world itself, Navajo culture, Navajo, uh, we have a lot in tradition and culture and, and things that we, we, we value, you know, there is value, there is uh, our prayers and our songs. If you take a minute to listen to the prayers and the protection songs, I mean, it teaches you a lot, to un it teaches you about you, you know, you if you participate in those kinds of things, it uh, makes you think of what is being said and what is being shared and what is being taught to you to understand what is your hands, your legs, your head, your mind, everything that you are, you know. Uh, so I know what a gene is, you know, a gene, you know. <laughs> I know what it smells like and I know what it tastes. You know? Uh, I've done that, I butchered, you know, and I made Nitsidiko ever since I was a kid, you know. So that has a lot to do with the color of what is Nitsidiko, you know, the color of the, the sheep corral, the color of the blankets that are made, the baskets that are made, uh, all the, uh, the fruit. Of the cantaloupes, the corn, everything, the smell. I mean, I, I, that's where I come, my, I feed from off of that, those forms and tastes. And, and I slept on the floor. I still sleep on the floor. You know, my wife sleeps in the bed, but I sleep on the floor. <laughs> uh, it's just something that I learned, you know, that uh, the energy up to earth is, is we, we have to be connected to it, you know. Nasabine nihinete, that's our soul, you know. Same energy flow, so. So when I, when I sleep on the floor, I energize, you know, for the next day, you know. So my, I make sure that I have my energy for, the morning hours of work, you know, and uh, it's a wonderful feeling to do that. I do that for myself, yeah. No, that's great. Um, I don't know, I, I, it takes me a second to get used to sleeping back on the floor again, but, uh, but definitely, um, we can definitely see those colors, you can almost get this like sensorial experience when we're taking a look at your paintings. It's, it's um, now that you bring up the, that the fact that you utilize those types of natural colors that exist in our own culture and your own paintings, um, you can actually start to feel and smell and taste the environments and the landscapes that you, that you're portraying. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, um, that there exist any type of tensions, like cultural tensions with the art form that you've chosen? Well, um, I think that's why we're told, you know, uh, by our elders that uh, you shouldn't, you know, the word you shouldn't, Dorida, you know. That's why I said, I think I said that uh, I shared the idea uh, the words of, of, of understanding and, and, and knowing who you are. When you know yourself, uh, uh, you understand the, the don'ts and the, and the do's, you know. 
and uh, you have your limits on what you can do and how you can portray some of the things that you're not you're not supposed to you know so if you look at my work i've been always been fascinated by yebiche you know and ever since i was a kid i i my father and my uncles they participated in that and the songs they they and i emulated that and and you know when i was a kid and that's sort of a part of me so Anytime you give me a piece of paper or a line, if you put a line across a blank sheet of paper or a canvas, that's what I see, you know. That's what move me, moves me, I guess you might say. Uh, she net, you know, you, you sort of uh, uh, grow, grew up with the energy about it, the fire, the, the, the essence of the medicine and, and also the the energy about uh, Yevichay, you know. So, I mean, tensions are, I don't know, really. I mean, when, when, when you really know what you're doing, there's really none. It doesn't matter what you do. Everything becomes a great piece of artwork, you know, just because you, you put in the time to develop that, you put in the time to work. You ask yourself, uh, you, you visualize a goal or visualize your future. And then in, the, in that sense, you are asking yourself, you're always questioning that. What am I doing? How am I gonna do it? When am I gonna do this? Why am I going to do this? You know, to answer all of these questions. You know, I, that's what I do is I ask myself uh, where I want to be 20 years from now, where I want to be 250 years from now. From here, uh, how's my work going to be viewed? But I learn in, in my uh, uh, workings that I always tell a story in my work for the future because artwork uh, I've learned through art history, uh, the lifespan of a piece of artwork is thousands of years. So I'm looking at the future. I hope one day that in the future, kids will say, this is how it was. This is how, it, you know, and that's how we learn. I really learn. Well, I learn and realize watching kids look at my work, and they talk about. It and they have a lot of questions about things like that, and uh, it's wonderful to ask and answer their their questions. I mean, I didn't have to be educated about not being Navajo. I just sort of know what it is because that's where I come from and the world is asking also uh, when I showed it over in Europe everybody knew of Navajo Reservation everybody knew of fry bread everybody knew of mutton you know so it was wonderful to hear that they've been there you know they've been to Chinle or they've been to Monument Valley or they've been to ship rock or different places. And so it really makes me feel good. And then to portray that again and to share the essence of that life with them is, is you know, really a joy. What is that? You, you mentioned briefly about, uh, actually multiple times now, about having your artwork and um, people asking you, especially younger generations, about the different types of landscapes that you're portraying and the culture that you're portraying. How do you feel that your artwork directly impacts our community then? Well, I think it, it, it energizes them because of the, the essence that I share, you know, the energy about what is now culture. And uh, the energy of it is in color, in design lines, and in shapes. And then to, to, to give them uh, 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 that sense of 
what the, the, the artwork gives them, you know, makes them feel good. It makes them feel good to see the cha or, you know, makes them feel good to see the water barrels. And the water barrels is an experience, you know, when, yeah, there's two uh, uh, oil drums there, but I pushed those things around ever since I was a kid, you know, filled them up or I built fires underneath so I could take a bath, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's that's the reason in the holes, you know, the buckets that I put. Because I, were, I, I spent time uh, carrying them, you know, doing my chores and things so that's what i share and that's what i think uh uh the energy about it is is what they really appreciate because it's known to them uh they've been there you know they felt the the, the sandstone they felt the the smelt the the, the uh uh sagebrush you know so I think it does a lot, it makes them feel good uh, enough that they come, just like when we, you and I met, you know, you, 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 you know the work without even really uh, getting it done, you know. And uh, I managed to be lucky to have uh, uh, the books I've done, the, the shows, the exhibits that I have uh, had the opportunity to have, you know, to our head, you know. You talked a little bit about some of the mentors that you, you got started, um, you said like when you were 36, I think that's what you, um, the, the age that you Oh, I think, I think at the, when I was 36, I, ever since I was a kid, uh, teachers, uh, uh, Dharm, I, I went to boarding school, so Dharm people, saw what I could do. And they would give me pencils, they would give me watercolors, they would give me paints. And they would give me the opportunity to, to, to have some time to, 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 to draw, you know, and teachers and, uh, and professors, art professors, you know, in college, you know, would say, you know, if you take it just a little more time and realize that you have something, you know, a gift, you need to put a little more effort in, in, in how you do things. So at age 35, I realized that I have all these people that have shared a word, a thought, uh, you know, that, that saw my future, you know, that what, if I just made time and applied a little more effort, I would make something of it, you know. And so at 35, I realized, hey, you know, I gotta, I'm 35 years old, 36 years old, I only have a few more years to, I otherwise I would never be uh, uh, what everybody saw me to be, you know, would be, you know. And so I made time, like I said, to took time from the kids and they gave me the time to really do something with it, you know, which I really appreciate. And to this to this day they're willing to do anything that I want to do because they saw me put the time in, you know. And it just didn't uh, I wasn't just uh uh uh, someone that they pushed out there and did something, you know, mm -hmm. took a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Do you see any of your grandchildren picking up um, some of your your passion for painting? Well, uh, when when they're living around me, you know, like this is my studio, and in here, everything that you see is has to do with art you know, from art books, magazines, material, you know, workspace. Uh, there's about one, two, three, four, five easels in here. And it's lit enough and, and it's built for that. You know, it's built for, to be a, a studio space, you know, where I could go and work by myself without 
having to, you know, uh, 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 get after the kids or something. They're in school over there at the house, you know, but I'm at the studio. I'm upstairs. My garage is downstairs. My house is about 25 feet away. So uh, I have a chance to walk to work, you know. It, 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 um, it helps to do that, you know. It helps to, 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 to get yourself time, time, like I was, I keep talking about time. If you get the time, you pursue your, and develop a, a career, you know, you, you get a good chance. And mentors are, over the years, artists, uh, fellow artists, and uh, Tony Beta is uh, Navajo Ways, my, my brother. And uh, Mr. Uh, White Singer there at the, at, the, at the college is a good friend of mine. And um, if you have a name like uh, Orlin Ben, uh, Orlin Joe, all the artists that are, are out there working is, is, are the ones, you know, that they're a family, you know, you, you learn uh, each other's clan and, and learn about family and you get to know each other and you get to enjoy and you help each other. You know, Ellen Hauser was one individual that used to come see me all the time. And he, he would say, he would always just say, what else are you going to do? You know, there's more to the pie than just painting pictures. So that's where that comes from. Uh, Robert Draper was someone I knew there in Chin Lee. He was one of my, uh, I think he did, he was doing watercolors at the Northern Arizona Museum when I was going to NAU. Him and Harrison Begay, and Andy Sinogen, and uh, uh, Jimmy Toddy, and a lot of those artists were, were, were you know, uh, relatively, let's see, their, their uncles, you know, clan wives. So it's really a, a, a family circle, you know, you get to know each other, you know each other's uh, uh, talents and, and uh, way of work, you know. And they were uh, good people, you know, but uh, to take a little bit from everybody, you know, take a piece of uh, idea, advice, of how how they do business and how they look at uh, how they deal with uh, gallery people and and uh, and you learn about who and 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 learn how to read your contracts and learn how to like really know what you're doing. You know, you really understand your goal and you learn everything about your goals and you you make it. You know, you make it come true by putting in the time to work, yeah. What would be your best piece of advice for up and coming artists? Specifically well, Navajo uh, artists. Huh? As for specifically think, Navajo artists. Well, tradition and culture says, you know, you have a long life, you know, you, you, if you're getting a 24 hour day, if you get up early and spend that time uh, working, looking at what your, what your, your canvases are going to be, visualizing what, what it's going to be and, and make it happen, you know, you, you work, the more you work, the more experience you have, you gain a lot more understanding as to what the media, the mediums are doing, the oil is doing, the watercolor is doing. You learn what happens, you actually experience, uh, you can take all kinds of schoolings if you want, but everybody wants you to paint like they do. But they don't teach you how to do things on your own. You know, you, you, you're in school and, and, and they teach you certain ways to work and you take a little bit of 
you know, this and that and make it your own. When you come to a time that one day everything is, comes and flows really easy, you know, it's no longer just a line anymore. It's, 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 uh, you know, something, you know, you take a piece of black paper, like I said, slash a line across it and it's something, you know, and somebody would say, what was the line for? And then, then there's, you know, it'd be say, you know, that is my line. I made that line. I made it bold because it's my line, you know. You might not like it, but it's my line. <laughs> you know? It's my line. <laughs> and people seem to understand and take it, you know, I mean, because uh, a piece of art is, is uh, what you make it, you know. If you put it into time, you would have something, you know. If you don't, if it's just a pretty horse, it's just be a pretty horse. And you're just gonna be doing pretty horses, you know. And yeah, if you actually feel the horse, ride the horse, and handle the horse, it doesn't matter how it looks, you know, because uh, uh, a horse will pretty much teach you what he or she's going to look like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. We, I actually have one more question before we open up. We have a little bit of time for some questions coming from our audience. And so, but before okay. we open it up to that, I guess um, one of the things that we always ask our, our, our guests who come on to talk with us is about the title of our series, which is uh, A lot of times people talk about it as what does that phrase mean to you? Oh, what a bend. Uh, put everything you have or anything, all the energy you have and put it in your work. It takes everything, every ounce of it to make it something. Just like I was saying, uh, the energy about my work is what I put in it, the blues, the reds, the yellows, it's simple, but it's how you convey it to put it together. That's how you express it and use it in your work. Oh, what's a bit? You get the fruits. The benefits are, are huge. You know, you, like here, I was a bitch, oh, I have a home, I have, I live in Flagstaff because I chose to, I was a bitch, oh. I've been to France, I've been to Germany, I've been to exhibits at the Smithsonian, uh, the Booth Museum, uh, San Francisco uh, uh, University, uh, the, the, you know, I mean, it, it, it takes you places. I was a bash I took a dollar, one dollar, and and made two dollars. I invested one dollar, made a dollar. I realized if I work, I'll get the third one. If I work hard, the third one shows up. I made three dollars, and then I worked a little bit harder, and I, I got the fourth one fourth one I didn't have to work for because they gave it to me in grants and in, in, in sponsorship and uh, and that was my uh, uh, thing was to take what I made and double it and then gain the third the third quarter you know and then the fourth one is pretty much in front of you you know because that is your investment in your life, your own life, which is your house, your family. And uh, it seems like everything that you do doesn't end, you know, like right now we're in the, the, the pandemic, everything was canceled and uh, there's no shows or anything. But you learn, you learn to, Think about times where you're not going to make anything. 
And you think about times when, when like right now, this year, I'll take a loss on what I didn't make. You know, it gave me time to rest. It gave me time to look at what else I could do. It gave me time to understand that I really, I'm seven years old, so I need a little more time to rest, you know. So I walked away from my studio for the last six or seven months and just spent with my family. I had a lot of work, to, a lot, a lot of, uh, plenty of honeydews around here to do. <laughs> So I had to catch up with that, but but it it it, it um, how would it be in Zeno? How would it be in the kiss? How would it be in the initial? How would it be this time? When I'm in the zone of where I'm not in zone, see. Taking everything that you know as a Navajo person and applying it, you know, using it. Now, if you, uh, I've learned in my time that I'm Navajo, 100% Navajo, but I've been educated in the Western America, Western influence. You know, if you understand that, the Western, uh, the English world. So now I've learned to combine the two and parallel the two. So in that sense, today we teach Navajo in our schools, which is a, a wonderful thing to, to, to see. Because when I was a kid, you could only speak English. You couldn't speak your language. But today, you can use both. You can say cow and bagashi at the same time. You know, you it means the same thing, you know, and it's very easy to do. I used to keep the, the Western culture and Navajo culture separate, separate. Then it was a struggle to go back and forth. You know, like when you went to school in Phoenix, you coming back to the res, you turn KT and in, you know, to get yourself familiar with speaking Navajo for the weekend, you know. But today I realized that I don't necessarily have to do that because people understand if you're a good artist, if you become a good person that communicates and educates his, his or her audience, they easily understand who you are, you know? And they learn Navajo too, you know? They, or the clientele will say, yeah, hey, you know? So it's, it's, it's kind of cool to have two things. You're applying 110%, you're told. Now you have two cultures. Now you have 220 to apply. But you can play with as little as 10% to do things. Imagine applying 220 in your efforts, you know. What, what you what will you gain you know yeah no definitely How's that? No, that hits it right on the spot for me um at least i can i get the feels when i start thinking about it um because it's you know it, it is all about that personal self-determination to do what you feel is is necessary and so, so yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can take a couple of questions from our audience. Kayla, um, I know Kayla had a question. Do you want to go ahead and ask, um, ask that with, uh, with Bahi now? Yeah. So Bahi, uh, uh, so we were talking when I asked you to be a presenter, I, we were talking and you said that you worked at the college 20 years ago. And I wanted you to elaborate more on what you taught in the classes, the courses that you taught there at the college. And I would like you to enlighten the students about the courses you taught here, if you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. I taught uh, art through uh, Navajo culture, which had to do with um, the uh, understanding what is, art on the reservation, 
I mean, what is art made on the reservation using the idea of uh, understanding Navajo culture? I'm trying to plug in my... Uh... <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It took us so long to get started. It's our fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that was uh, understanding, you know, using Navajo culture in your artwork and using and feeding off Navajo culture to create Navajo uh, art. That was the, uh, the goal was to teach people of the world how art is, is used in uh, Navajo culture or how, where it evolves or where it comes from. I hope I plugged it. Would you get that? I guess uh, looking at, uh, we had people that came from all over the world, took a summer class and um, they learned, they came to learn about Navajo culture. And I taught, uh, in our class that taught some of the symbolism in Navajo culture and some of the traditional uh, uh, thought behind what is a, a weaving, a rug, basket, uh, pottery, and also drawing and sand painting and how uh, these people wanted to know what, you know, like Navajo culture is about acknowledgement, knowing your family, knowing yourself, knowing the earth, knowing uh, what is the, the horse, the goats, and all of these things that makes Navajo and what is the mountain stew and what is Siddiquah and all of these things. And uh, my job was to share with them and make them understand and send them home. And I learned that I, uh, they learn about themselves, actually, who they are and where they come from. <clears throat> so what I've learned do doing that is uh, I've learned that the world is uh, in the world we have all kinds of ethnic groups, but not everybody know, knows where they came from. Some of those people came and didn't know who they, where they, what ethnic group they were, because some of their cultures and traditions were hidden from them. And then some of them re realized that they wanted to belong uh, and to, they want to be a part of Navajo culture. So they took on the, the idea of being Navajo. They learn about the four direction. They learn about male and female. They learned about uh, uh, life on the reservation, about a Hogan, the structure of a Hogan, the structure of a sweat lodge, you know, all of these things. It was, uh, it was something that was wonderful to share with them because they really didn't have anything for themselves. So a lot of them left with a bag of corn pollen, you know. I'm thinking his phone died, oh no. <laughs> um, well, we will uh, get back in contact with Bahi. Um, and I know we do have one more question that's in the waiting room right now uh, about from Benjamin about uh, his the favorite book that he's illustrated. He's FaceTiming and, me right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> What was the password? <laughs> oh, it's okay, don't worry. Um, we had a question that came in and said, what is your favorite book that you have illustrated? I have a couple. I, um, I did Monster Slayer and uh, um, The Eclipse of a Navajo Sun. The Sun Painter was my own story and uh, um, 
Monster Slayer was the first book that I ever had the opportunity to illustrate. And it had, uh, it was uh, a book that uh, I think we did uh, three runs. It sold out three times. Everybody just lined up to, to get them because it, it was new and, and it, it just sort of took me across the country. Mm -hmm. Every uh, book, uh, conventions, conferences, and even took me uh, when I did a book signing in Europe. We had the books there. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing about uh, how the response to it, you know, uh, that's why I say Navajo culture is really something to, uh, you know, to, to share with the world, you know, and, uh, and after that, following that, all the books that I've done, I think I've done nine books. People really uh, uh, enjoyed them because they were, uh, I think some of them said it's real, you know. It was com as far as comparing it with uh, like Tony Hillerman or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Tony. <laughs> all, all you Hillerman lovers out there. Yeah, definitely want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us today and being so patient with the technology. It's really been a learning curve for everybody. Well, it's, it's new to me because uh, I think in past years, uh, my son was always the one that did all of this, you know. He would set up things and he would do uh, uh, all this video stuff and uh, you know, iPads and computers. And um, to, to jump into it and learn how to do it, it took me a while. I think uh, to, to understand how it works, but I'm still learning, you know. I've just learned, I think, in the last year how to use uh, some of the tools my son had, you know, some of the software and things. Mm -hmm. I've learned to do uh, uh, graphics, you know, and, and also, you know, try to learn to animate stories, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a, quite a bit, you know, to, to take on. It's a completely different uh, 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 format, uh, you know, to work on uh, computers and, and iPads and things like that, you know, to, it's a whole learning. So I should say he taught me a lot just by the tools that he had, you know. So, so he taught you well. <laughs> Yeah, good. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Yeah, it's wonderful to learn how to zoom. Show you the the my studio. Yeah. I don't know if you can all see it, but how's that? You have a painter's paradise there. Yeah, this is like a museum. <laughs> Everywhere you look, it says you know artwork. Well, thank you so much, Bahi. I'm going to go ahead and sign us off. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Nezhonako <laughs> <laughs>